Okay, all praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Understanding Romans 2.29. Let's open up with the book of Romans 15 verse 4. Let's start there. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written of all time were written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that is that the things that were written are for time, are for time. In the past, were written for our learning. Hold this, give me Isaiah 30, verse 8. The things that were written are for time were written for our learning. Okay, read that. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. I'll go, write it before them in the table. Note it in the book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever. You see that Isaiah saying the same thing. The apostle Paul is quoting Isaiah. He says, now go, write it before them in a table. The table is the Bible. Hold this. Give me that in Habakkuk 2. Okay, Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Let's see what the table is. Okay, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Read that. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. Read. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You see that? He says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. So go back to Isaiah 30 verse 8. We understand it a little better now that we read it with Isaiah. Read that, Isaiah 30 verse 8. One more again. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now go, write it before them in a the table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, forever and ever. You see that? He says, now go write it before them in a table. The table is the Bible. And note it in a book. That's the answer right there. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. For the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Go back. Romans 15 verse 4 again. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written you for our that? learning. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. You see that? They're written aforetime. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Go ahead. We're written for our learning. Mm -hmm. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see that? We find our patience and our comfort in the scriptures. Okay? By looking at the what? By looking at the history of our forefathers, how the Lord dealt with them, how they dealt with the Lord through their patience, and they were comforted when they were in their trials. When they were experiencing affliction, the scriptures comforted them. Comforted them. Likewise, today, today we're doing the same thing. The scriptures is there to comfort us, brothers and sisters. Whatever it is that you're going through, the scriptures is there to comfort you. You understand? If you feel like you're losing patience, guess what? The scriptures will comfort you, will return you back to the Father. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1. You know what? Get Romans 2.29. Let's read it. Before we go to the book of Acts, get Romans 2, verse 29. Read that. Because this right here is a Christian stumbling block. Our brothers and sisters in Christianity, they stumble over this. So today we're going to give the sense. Hold that. Give me that in uh, Nehemiah 8, verse 8. Let's get the sense. Today we're going to get the sense of the scriptures this day. Okay? Read that. Nehemiah 8, verse 8. Read that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8. Mm -hmm. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see that? So when we read in the book of the laws of God distinctly, guess what? The Lord gives us the sense and he causes us to understand the things that are written therein. So the laws of God will give you common sense, which our people, we don't have. So God's laws will give you sense. Okay? Romans 2 verse 29. So we can what? We can get the sense. We're going to get the sense of this verse right here. Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 29. Go ahead. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, mm -hmm. and not in the letter. Go ahead. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. You see what he's saying? He says, he says, in the spirit and not in the letter. What is he talking about? Not in the letter. Jump up to verse 28. Okay, because there's a colon there letting you know the scriptures continue is being properly expounded in verse 29. Read verse 28 now. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 28. 
Mm -hmm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. That's the letter. So now what the Apostle Paul is explaining is, listen, you are not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is, which is outward in the flesh. The Christian church, they use these two verses right here to say, you see, you don't have to, listen, you can be a Jew, you can be a Jew in the spirit. That's what they're saying, meaning it's not about bloodline. You can be a Jew in the spirit, meaning what? What are they saying? You can be a spiritual Israel. That's what they're saying. They're using this verse to say, guess what? You can be a spiritual Israel. They, that's how they use this verse right here. You understand? So today we're going to get the understanding this day in the spirit of Christ. Okay, so let's understand who are the Romans, because we must understand that. In the book of Acts, chapter 18, verse 1, to understand the letters of Paul, you must understand the book of Acts, okay? Acts chapter 18, verse 1, read that. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. So the apostle Paul was traveling, you understand, going to different islands, Greek, uh, Greek islands where Israel was scattered. Northern Kingdom was scattered that way, that grew up in what? They were in their gentle state of mind, okay? So read that again, verse 1. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 1. Read. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. So he left Athens, he went to Corinth. Go ahead. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born in Pontus, lately come from Italy. Where was he coming from? Lately come from Italy. Lately come from Italy. Lately come from Italy. Go ahead. With his wife, Priscilla. Mm -hmm. Because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. He, what did, this is Claudius Caesar. Claudius Caesar commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. That's why it says, lately come from Italy. So he commanded all the Jews to leave Rome and, what, and to come unto them. Guess what? The, not all the Jews left Rome, obviously. But the, there were those that were commanded by Claudius Caesar to leave to depart from Rome. You understand? So now the Apostle Paul, guess what he's doing? What we're reading here, we are learning that there were Jews that were scattered in Rome. That's what we're reading right here. You understand? The diaspora, the scattered Israelites. Okay? Now give me Acts chapter 28 verse 16. Acts 28 verse 16. So what we just read, we understand that there were Jews that were in Rome that were commanded by Claudius Caesar to depart from there. Okay, read that. Acts 28, verse 16. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And when we came to Rome, the centurion... When we and when we came to Rome... And when we came to Rome, when we came to Rome, this is the Apostle Paul. Remember, the Apostle Paul was traveling. He also understood that there were Jews that were in Rome that we, you know, then they were commanded to depart from Rome. Now the Apostle Paul is in Rome now. You understand? The Apostle Paul came to Corinth, you understand? And he found Jews that were commanded by Claudius Caesar, you understand, to leave Rome. They were at Corinth. Now the Apostle Paul is no longer at Corinth. Now he's in Rome. Read again, verse 16. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 16. Really? And when we came to Rome, mm -hmm. the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. You see that? The centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. Now, this is the Roman church. These are, these are Romans. These are the Romans now, the soldiers. Go ahead. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. So now the apostle Paul was under house arrest. Okay. He was under house arrest. Go ahead. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. Mm -hmm. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, mm -hmm. though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. You see that? He says, I was delivered. What? He says, I was delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Why? Because remember, the apostle Paul was teaching the gospel of Christ. And guess what? Our forefathers, the scribes and Pharisees that reported to Rome, didn't like that thing. 
you understand? They did not like that thing because why? Rome gave them a better life than the rest of the Israelites, just like it was in Egypt, okay? Now, what we're reading here, I want you men and women to understand. He says, men and brethren. So he's talking to Israelites. Remember, the apostle Paul is in house arrest in Rome. He's in Rome under house arrest, okay? Jump down to verse 20. Watch this. Acts chapter 28, verse 20. Mm -hmm. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. You see, you see, it says, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with chains. Why? Because remember, the apostle Paul was teaching the Israelites scattered there in Rome. But now the apostle Paul is under house arrest, so he cannot travel around. That's why the next book is the book of Romans. He's writing to the Israelites scattered in Rome because he cannot move around to travel like he used to. You understand? That's why. Read verse 23 now. Come on. The book of Acts chapter, 20, chapter 28 verse 23. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging. To him he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of, out of the prophets, from morning till evening. You see what he was doing? Because now they gave him time, so that meaning what? Visits. So people will come and visit him. Who's that? The Israelites will come and visit, you understand? And the what he was persuading them concerning the kingdom of God, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. You understand? The time that was allotted to, them, to him to deal with the brothers so that why? He can deliver the letters, you understand, to the leaders of the church, okay? Um, jump down, keep reading, verse 24, watch this. And some believe the things which were spoken, and some believe not. You see that? There are those that believe the things that the Apostle Paul taught out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, and there are those that did not believe, you understand? Jump down to verse 28, watch this. The book of Acts chapter 28, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles mm. and that they will hear it. You see what he's saying? He says, be it known therefore unto you. You who? The Jews. You understand? Those that did not believe that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles that, and, and that they will hear it. I'm going to deal with that later on, not right now. So, but here I'm showing you the Apostle Paul was in Rome. You understand? He was under house arrest. He was writing letters to them because he couldn't travel around. How long was he under house arrest? Jump down to verse 30. The book of Acts chapter 28, verse, verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house mm -hmm. and received all that came in unto him. You see that? For two years, he was under house arrest, the Apostle Paul. For two years. You understand? Now watch this. Now give me the book of Romans 1 and 1. Now we understand. The Apostle Paul, he was teaching, you understand, under house arrest. And guess what? The brothers that would visit him, those that believed, they took their letters and messages, the letters to what? To the Israel that was scattered in Rome. You understand? Convincing them of what? The kingdom of God that is to come out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets because the book of Romans wasn't written. You understand? The gospels wasn't written yet and all that. So they were teaching out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. Okay. Now let's get into the actual book of the, the, the book that the apostle Paul wrote, the letters that he wrote to the Israelites scattered over there in Rome. Read that. Romans 1 and 1. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 1. Hmm. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. You see what he's saying? He says, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Because why? The apostle Paul was called in to teach the scattered Israelites. Okay? Verse 7 now. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, mm -hmm. grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see what he's saying? He says, to all that be in Rome, 
Beloved of God, we need to get this thing because why? We need to hit the Christian with this over the head until it sinks in. Get that in Baruch 3, verse 36. It says, to all that be in Rome, you understand, beloved of God, called to be saints. Who's beloved of God? Get that. Baruch 3, verse 36. Come on. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 36. Mm -hmm. He had found out all the way of knowledge and had given it unto Jacob, his servant, and to Israel, his beloved. And to Israel, his beloved. To Israel, his beloved. So the Apostle Paul is writing to the Israelites that are scattered in Rome. Go back to Romans 1, verse 7 again. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. They are called to be saints, meaning they are the saints. The Israelites are the saints of God. Get that in Psalms 50, verse 5. They said they are called to be saints. They are the saints. Because we brought this out at camp. And a Christian, so-called Christians, what they did is they said, no, you see, they are not the actual, they are not the saints. They are called to become saints. I'm like, this is crazy. Anyway, Psalms 50, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Read. Gather my saints together unto me. Mm -hmm. those, that, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that? He says, gather my sins together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The only saints in the Bible that made a covenant with the Most High God by sacrifice is the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. That's it. There's nobody else that the Lord has made a covenant with. You understand? Nobody else is the 12 tribes of Israel. So go back to Romans chapter 1 verse 7. Read again. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. All that in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Read. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's heavy what he said. He says, grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Father. So he's letting you know that the saints, the Israelites scattered in Rome, Guess what? Grace is only to them and peace is only to them from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Because there's no peace in our nation. You understand? We need grace so that why? We can get our minds right, get ourselves together before the Lord returns. So we can get a chance to get the kingdom. So that's what the Apostle Paul is saying right there. Now jump down to verse 15. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 15. Mm-hmm. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Read again, verse 15. The book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 15. Mm. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. You see what he's telling the Israelites that were scattered in Rome because he was under house arrest? It says, so, as much as it's in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. You see that? He's making a distinction. He's not talking about the actual Romans, but Israel is scattered in Rome. Okay? Now, give me the book of Romans chapter 2 now. Romans 2, read verse 9. Okay? Romans 2 verse 9. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 9. You know what? Hmm. Read verse 17. Then we're going to jump up. Okay? Read Romans 2 verse 17. Watch this. Now, the class is going to escalate. It's going to get hard. So pay close attention. Okay? Read verse 17 now. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 17. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, mm. and makest thy boast of God. Read that again verse 17. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 17. Mm. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and right in the law. Hold on. He says, Behold, thou art called a Jew. The who's the apostle Paul talking to here? Hmm. He says, Behold, thou art called a Jew, and do what now? And restest in the law. And you resting in the law. Go ahead. And makest thy boast of God. And you are making thy boast of God. So who is he making reference to when he says, Thou art called a Jew? 
and resteth in the Lord. Who is he making reference to? And they are boasting. You understand? Jump up to verse 9. Watch this. Pay close attention. Okay, come on. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 9. Read. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. That part right there, of the Jew first. So in verse 17, when it says, thou art called a Jew, you see he's making, he says, of the Jew first, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile, of the Jew first. The Jew is making reference to, he has talked about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the southern kingdom of Israel. You understand? Read verse 10. Come on. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. You see that? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. The Jew first, the Jew first in verse 9 and 10. Guess what? He's making reference, that's what he's making reference to in verse 17. Read verse 17 again when it says to the Jew first in verse 9 and 10. He's referring to them again in verse 17. Read verse 17 again. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew mm -hmm. and restest in the law really? and makest to thy boast of God. So now the Jews in Jerusalem, he says, they rest in the law and they make him boast of God. Watch this. Give me the book of Zechariah 12 verse 7. We went over this a couple of some things ago, but I'm going to touch on something, then I'm going to go somewhere else. Get that, Zechariah 12 verse 7. Why is saying to the Jew first? Okay. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12 verse 7. Go ahead. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Stop right there. You see what he's saying? The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The tents of Judah first. This is the prophecy. That's why the Apostle Paul, yes, he was teaching the Israelites scattered in Rome. But guess what? He was also dealing with the southern kingdom of Israel. That's why he's saying to the Jew first, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentiles. Why? Because of this prophecy that we're reading here. Read again. Verse 7 again. The book of Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord will save the tents of Judah first. Meaning what? The southern kingdom will receive the gospel first. Read that again, verse 7, Zechariah 12, verse 7. The book of Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord, the Lord will save the tents of Judah first. Meaning what? The gospel must first be delivered to who? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Hold that. Give me the book of Acts chapter 13. Okay. Acts chapter 13. Watch this. Acts chapter 13. Read verse, verse 44. We're going to read down. Okay. Read. The book of Acts chapter 13 verse 44. Mm -hmm. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. They came to hear the word of God because the apostle Paul was teaching with Barnabas. Go ahead. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting mm. and blaspheming. That's the same thing that we see every day when we are at camp. Guess what? Then when the multitudes come, when the people come to hear the word, there are those by the wayside who hate. They are filled with envy, you understand? And they approach to camp. They want to contradict and blaspheme the things that we teach as it is written. Go ahead, watch this. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, mm. it was necessary that the word of God should, should first have been spoken to you. You see that? It says, it was necessary, according to the prophecy in Zechariah 12 verse 7, it was necessary that the word of God should first, should first, should first have spoken unto you. You who? You Jews in Jerusalem, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's what he's talking about. Come on. But seeing you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. We're going to deal with that later on. But here we're dealing with what? The gospel should first be delivered to the Jews in Jerusalem. You understand? Now watch this. Give me, let's dig into that because it says what? To the Jew first and also to, or to the Gentiles. Now, Go back to Zechariah 12, verse 7. Let's read the prophecy again so we understand what the Apostle Paul is saying in the Spirit of Christ. Read that again. 
Upon Zechariah chapter 12, verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. You see that? The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The tents of Judah. Let's deal with the tents of Judah. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 15. 1 Kings 12. Okay. 1 Kings 12, verse 15. Read that. First book of Kings, chapter 12, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people. The king that did not hearken unto the people is Rehoboam. Okay, Rehoboam did not hearken unto the people. The advisors, the old men, the wise men. Go ahead. For the cause was from the Lord. It was of the Lord what was taking place. Come on. That he might perform his saying, which the, which the Lord spake by Ahijah, the Shilonite, and to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. So now, what we're reading here is, this is going into the split of the kingdom, the split of the nation of Israel into southern kingdom and northern kingdom. Okay, read verse, 15, verse 16, come on. So when all Israel saw that the king had came not unto them, the people answered the king saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Mm -hmm. To your tent, O Israel. You see what they are saying? Is that this is northern kingdom they are selling. What they are saying? What portion do we have in David? What do we have to do with, with, with the kingdom of Judah in Jerusalem under David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tent, O Israel. Okay, go ahead. Now see to thine own house. Now see to thy own house, David. Meaning northern kingdom, southern kingdom. Meaning southern kingdom. Go ahead. So Israel departed unto their tents. So Israel, when he says Israel, that's northern kingdom departed unto their tents. You understand? Northern kingdom departed unto their tents. Now you've got Judah in Jerusalem with Rehoboam. Go ahead. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. So when he says, as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, that's making reference to what? Judah. Judah and Benjamin. He's going to explain that in a second. Go ahead. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones, hmm. that he died. Go ahead. Therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. You see what happened? Because now Rehoboam sent Adoram to collect tax from Northern Kingdom and they put him to death. Okay, go ahead. Verse 19, watch this. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. You see that? So Northern Kingdom rebelled against the house of David, which is the Southern Kingdom, unto this very day. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. And it came to pass. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, mm -hmm. that he sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. So now, according to what? According to the word of the prophet Ahiah in 1 Kings chapter 11. So now, the northern kingdom, they made Jeroboam king over them. Go ahead. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. You see that part right there? Read that part again. There was what? There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. So the house of David was under who? Rehoboam. He says, but there was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. Watch this. Now, because remember we read in Zechariah 12 verse 7, it says, the Lord, shall, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's what he's going into. Following the split. Okay, go ahead. Verse 21. The book, first book of Kings, chapter 12, verse 21. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin. You see that? With the tribe of Benjamin. So now you've got Judah, then now you've got Benjamin. Okay. Judah and Benjamin are together under Rehoboam. Read. And hundred and four score thousand chosen men which were warriors, to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. 
You see that they wanted to go there and fight. But remember, we read what this for this cause was from the Lord in verse 15. Now jump down to verse 31. Watch this. Because what happened was now you've got Judah and Benjamin under Rehoboam. You've got Northern Kingdom, the rest of the tribes with the tribe of Levi under Jeroboam, you understand, in Northern Kingdom. Watch this. Read verse 31. First book of Kings, chapter 12, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Now, this is Jeroboam. What Jeroboam did, he set up two golden calves, one in Beersheba, even unto one in Bethel, and put one another one in Dan. Two golden calves for northern kingdom to worship. And guess what? He says, he said what? Read that verse again, verse 31. He made the what? First book of Kings, chapter 12, verse 31. Really? And he made a house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people. Mm. Which which were not of the sons of, Is of Levi. So what did Jeroboam do? do? He fired the priests. He fired the Levites. He says he made an house of, he says made an house of high places, meaning where they worship Bea, and made priests of the lowest of the people, meaning set up bums up in them, which were not of the sons of Levi. So what did he do with Levi? Get 2 Chronicles 11 verse 13. What did he do with Levi? Okay, watch this. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 13. And the really? priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of their coasts. Now remember, it says the priests and all the Levites that were in all Israel, northern kingdom, is as resorted to him out of their coasts. Watch this, read. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions mm. and remember. came to Judah. Hold on. In the book of Numbers, remember, the Levites, they were given suburbs in the, in the book of Numbers. You understand? Suburbs. Where they guess what? Suburbs in all the tribes so that they can teach Israel how to what? To sacrifice. Okay? Read that again. Verse 14. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 14. Read. Right? For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. You see that? So the Levites, they left their suburbs and their position and in the in northern kingdom and came to Judah in Jerusalem. Go ahead. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them off from executing the priest's office unto the Lord. So he, he fired them because remember, the Levites, don't, they don't sacrifice to idols. They don't sacrifice in the high places. They sacrifice in the temple, the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of all during the day, during the day of atonement. You understand? So what, what Jeroboam did, he fired them because he knew they were not going to sacrifice unto those golden calves. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils, mm -hmm. for the calves which he had made. You see that? He says he ordained him priests, the priests of the lowest of the play, or the lowest, the priests of the lowest of the people which were not the sons of Levi. What did they do? And he says, what? Please, and for the devils and for the calves which he made. So those were that were not of the sons of Levi, guess what they did? They worshiped to those demons, to those devils that Jeroboam set up. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 16. 2 Kings 17, verse 16. Now what you have now is what? You've got Judah, you've got Benjamin, now you've got Levi joined unto Judah and Benjamin in Jerusalem. You see that? So that's Judah. That's the just Judah and Israel. So you've got Judah, which is ben, Judah with Benjamin and Levi. Then you've got the rest of the tribes under Jeroboam now. Okay. Second Kings chapter 17. Read verse 16. Second book of Kings, chapter 17, verse 16. Read. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even to cows, mm -hmm. and made a grove. And worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Bea. Now, this is northern kingdom under Jeroboam. Remember, that was says even two calves, those golden calves, one in Bethel and the other one in Dan. Go ahead. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. So they were doing committing abortions. Okay, come on. And used divination and enchantments. Witchcraft, right? And saw themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke mm -hmm. him to anger. 
So they provoke the Lord to anger through abortions, witchcraft, and sorcery. Go ahead, verse 18. Watch this. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel mm. and removed them out of his sight and what, there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Yes, the, we read the same thing in 1 Kings chapter 12. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Remember at this point, what happened? Northern Kingdom was taken into a captivity by the Assyrians, you understand? When Shalmaneser showed up on the scene. 722 BC. So now what's happening here is now you've got Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. The rest of the tribes are in slavery under the Assyrians. But what I'm showing you is when it goes into the tribe, when it says, the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, it goes into Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which is referred to as the southern kingdom of Israel. Okay? Get Zechariah. Zechariah. Before you get Zechariah, get Ezra. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get Zechariah 11 verse 14. Let's go back to Zechariah chapter 11, read verse 14. Now. The book of Zechariah chapter 11, verse 14. Read. Then I cut asunder my other stuff, even bands, mm. that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. So the Lord is the one that broke the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. He's the one that did that. That's what we read in 1 Kings 12, verse 15. It says, for the cause of from the Lord. Yes, that's what we're reading here again. Now watch this. Give me Ezra 1 verse 3. Because what's happening is there's an official split in Israel. You've got Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, Southern Kingdom, and you've got the rest of the tribes, which later was referred to as Gentiles. Why? Because of what Jeroboam made them do. Okay? And they continue on on the evil that Jeroboam did. Read that. Ezra chapter 1 verse 3. The book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 3. Go ahead. Who is there among you of all his people? Mm. His God be with him. Go ahead. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Uh -huh. And build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. So now this is during the time when Cyrus of King of Persia, he has then commissioned Israelites to return back to Jerusalem and rebuild. Okay, go ahead. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the man of his place Help him with, with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Watch this. Go ahead. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests. Stop right there. So it says, they rose, then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin. Go ahead. And the priests and the Levites. Stop right there. So when it says, and the priests and the Levites, it's talking about the Levites, okay? So now you've got Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that are now returning back to, the, to Jerusalem to rebuild. Watch this. Go ahead. With, with all them whose spirit God had raised. You see that? With all them whose spirit God has raised. With all them whose spirit God has raised. So this goes into what? This goes into the remnant of Northern Kingdom. You understand? This goes into the remnant of Northern Kingdom that was in Jerusalem, in their land that was allotted to them by Joshua. When you read Joshua 18, verse 5 down. Okay? So that's what we're going over here. With all them whose spirit God has raised. Because the majority of them, where were they at? Get that in uh, 2 Esdras 13, verse 40. 2 Esdras, chapter 13, verse 40. Second book of Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own hey. land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40 again. Read that again. Second book of Ezra, chapter 13, verse 40. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king. Mm -hmm. Whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. And he, carried them, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. 
So now what we're reading here is we recall is we are, we are recollecting the history of the Assyrian Empire that we read in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 16 down. When Shalmaneser came and took Northern Kingdom, where there was left none other but the tribe of Judah only. Who was there? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Go ahead. Verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves mm -hmm. that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So now you notice here in verse 41. Remember, verse 14, verse 41, there's, there's, there's a lot of history here that is not being mentioned. Remember, the Assyrians came, they took northern kingdom into slavery. Who came after the Assyrians? Guess who, which kingdom rose up? Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Now we're reading here around 606 BC. Now you've got verse 41. This is when we were in Persia, what we read in Ezra 1. I need you men to pay attention, okay? So verse 41 again. Second book of Ezra chapter 13 is 41. Come on. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen mm -hmm. and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. So now this is during the time of Persia, you understand, where the, the, the majority of Northern Kingdom, they took the council among themselves to go to a place where never mankind dwelt. Okay, read on, verse 42. That read. they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. You see that? It says that they might there keep their statutes which they never kept in their own land. Why? Because they were taken out of that land by the Assyrians. And then Babylon came, took Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the rest of the ten. Then Persia came and took us over. Guess what? Now, they say, listen, when we go to a place where never mankind dwell, we're going to keep the commandments over there. Go ahead. For the Most High then showed signs for them. Mm -hmm and held still the flood till they were passed over. You see that? So the Lord, guess what? Guess what the Lord did? He, he held still the flood for them. The Lord was helping them to navigate to go to a place where never mankind dwelt. Okay, go ahead. For through that country, there was a great way to go, mm -hmm. namely of a year and a half. Really? And the same region is called Azareth. Azareth. Azareth is the biblical name for what is now known as America, okay? So now, guess what? That's where Northern Kingdom went over there, you understand? The tribe of Gad in the North America, then you've got South, South, South America, North America, uh, Central America, where you've got Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Zebulon, and so forth, scattered all over there, North, Central, and South America. So what we're reading here is Northern Kingdom going to a place where never mankind dwelt, which is called the New World. You understand? So the East is called the Old World, but the, the, the West, which is North, Central, and South America, is referred to as the New World. That's why you hear things like New World Order, okay, under Babylon the Great. So that's where Northern Kingdom went. You understand? 539 BC. Go ahead, around, approximate. Go ahead. Then took the day until the latter time. Read. And now when they shall begin to come. You see that? It says, then dwell they there until the latter time. The latter time is talking about the time of the Gentiles. Until the time of the Gentiles rulership be over. You understand? Because where they at? They are in our land. They are also in, no in, 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 in North America. Until their rulership is over, they are going to be there. Then it says, now when they shall begin to come meaning come back into this truth. When? When the Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. You understand? So go back to Ezra, chapter 1. Ezra, chapter 1. Read verse 5, read verse five again. Ezra, chapter 1, verse 5. Go ahead. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites with all them whose spirit God had raised. Mm -hmm to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. You see that? So now in Jerusalem, you had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the remnant of Northern Kingdom. You understand? The remnant of Northern Kingdom.
Watch this. Get that in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew 4. I'm going to touch on it, but I'm going to touch it on it again later on. But I just want to paint a picture. Get that in Matthew 4 verse 15 real quick. The book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 15. Go ahead. The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the mm. way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You see that? The land of Zebulon. So you had Zebulon during the time of Christ, during the time of Rome. Zebulon, Naphtali, you understand? It says beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. This is Northern Kingdom. The remnant of them. The majority had gone already during the time of the Persian Empire. Okay? Now, watch this. Remember, what we read in the book of Ezra is what? We were in Persia. We went back to Jerusalem. Who took over the Persian Empire? Get that in First Maccabees. I'm taking you through history now. Watch this. First Maccabees 1 and 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. Really? And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who mm. came out of the land of Shittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his state the first over Greece. Now, this is Alexander the Greek. Alexander the Greek, he took over 333 BC, you understand, and he took over the Persian Empire. So now, what we read in Ezra, there, there's a new kingdom now, now that's coming into power, which is the kingdom of the Greeks. You understand? So don't forget, the Persians, the Persians were ruling, they are no longer ruling. Now, Greece is ruling. You understand? So guess what? We are scattered all over. Greece is ruling over the kingdoms that the Persians we're ruling over where Israel is scattered as well under the Persians, including where in Jerusalem, because we had to return back to rebuild. So keep that in mind. Now give me first, first Maccabees 8 and 1. You understand? After the, 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 the Romans, uh, the Greeks took over, the Romans took over after. Watch this. Read that. First Maccabees 8 and 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm hmm Excuse me, sir. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans, that they were mighty and valiant men, and mm -hmm. such as would and such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them, and make a so league now, of amity. Go ahead, go ahead. And make a leave and make a league of amity with all that came unto them. So now you have got the Roman Empire taking over around 549 BC. This is the Roman Republic, okay? This 54, around 549 BC, this is the Roman Republic. This is now Judah's and heir of the, this is Judah Maccabee, of the fame of the Romans that they were mighty and valiant men, such as would lovingly accept all that joined themselves unto them. So Rome was happy with those that joined themselves with themselves, okay? And made a league of amity, meaning friendship. That's why today they call it, they, call, they say America's allies, which is America's an extension of ancient Rome. It says, and it make a league of amity with all that came unto them. That made, they, they were allied, allies with Rome. They said they were happy about that. You understand? So now you've got the Romans in taking over. This is the Roman Republic, okay? So, so now, watch this. Now we are in Rome now. Okay, I take you, I took you back to the to, to Assyria. You understand? I jumped Babylon, I went to Persia, Greece, and Rome. Now we are in Rome. Watch this. Give me the book of Romans 2, verse 17 again. Go back there. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 17. Go ahead. Behold, thou art called a Jew mm -hmm. and restest in the law. Go ahead. And make us thy boast of God. So now the Jew that is making reference to here, who is that? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Okay. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi is talking about them here. Jump up to verse 9. Read 10, 9 and 10 together again. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. He says, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Of the Jew first. Who's this Jew first? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, southern kingdom, according to Zechariah 12 and 7. Next verse. Go ahead. But glory, honor, and peace 
to every man that walketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So this Jew is making reference to Southern Kingdom because they were the majority of the tribes that was in Jerusalem when Christ walked the earth. You understand? Plus the remnant of Northern Kingdom that we touched on Zebulon and Naphtali. You've got Asher also, you've got Ephraim as well, according to the John 4 with the Samaritan woman. Okay? Now, jump down to verse 17 again. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. They were making boast, they were boasting of the of, of God, right? He says they rest in the law. We're gonna deal with that. They rest in the law. You understand? And make it themselves boast of God. Jump down to verse 23. Watch this. Verse 23. Come on. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through mm -hmm. breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. Read it again. It says thou what? Thou thou makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, Dishonorest thou God. So who is the thou that makest thy boast of the law? Is talk about the Jew. Who's that? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. He says, Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. Because guess what? What I'm showing you is you had the Jews in Jerusalem that were boasting of the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. They were boasting in that. You understand? Watch this. Get Ephesians 2 verse 8. We're going to deal with who was boasting in the law. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Go ahead. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Mm -hmm. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You see that is uh, meaning the it is the grace that is the gift of God. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now watch this. Hmm. Keep going. Read verse 9. Watch this. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's the same thing that we just read. Is but here the apostle Paul is not saying. Thou makest thou boast of the law. He says, not of works. What is this work talking about? The works of the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. Because who, the, the, you had the Jews in Jerusalem, that was what? They were boasting in the works of the law. You understand? They were boasting in the works. What was the works of the law? Bringing the blood of bulls and of goats. That was their boast. They were boasting in that. But read verse 8 one more again. So we understand. Of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Stop right there. For by grace are ye saved through faith. This grace right here, get that in John 1 17. We're coming back. John chapter 1, verse 17. It says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. I'm gonna break this down also, but not today. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Let's deal with that. John 1 verse 17. Get that. Of John chapter 1, verse 17. Read. Really? For the law was given by Moses, but mm -hmm. grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. You see that? For the law was given by Moses. What law? The law of animal sacrifice was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Go back to Ephesians 2. Read verse 8 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. By grace are ye saved through faith, mm -hmm. and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. So by grace are ye saved through faith, because who brought grace? He says, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So by the grace of Christ, him dying on the cross for the 12 tribes of Israel, we are going to get deliverance through faith. Faith in who? Faith in Christ, the sacrifice that he made. Jump up to verse 6. Book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And had raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You see that? It says made us sit together in heavenly places 
in Christ Jesus. Mm, heavy stuff. Go ahead. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You see that? The, you see what he's saying? That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. As who? Israelites. Through Christ Jesus. Because why? Through Christ. Through Christ. We must believe in the sacrifice that Christ made. That's the faith we must have. We must have faith in Christ. That's why when you read the book of Hebrews, it keeps talking about faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Why? Because the Jews in Jerusalem, they did not have faith in Christ's sacrifice. That's why he keep telling them about having faith and faith and faith. Why? Because they did not have faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. They had faith in the animals that they had to sacrifice. That's why he was saying that. So now he's saying the same thing. Now keep reading. Read verse 8 now. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. You see that? that For by of... grace. The, hold on. The grace that was brought by Christ, you are saved through faith. The faith that the faith of, of the faith in Christ. What does that mean? The sacrifice that he made, we must put our faith in that sacrifice that he made. You understand? Go ahead. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. When he says not of yourselves, because when he says not of yourselves, what did the Jews in Jerusalem do? They were sacrificing. So now they were boasting, you know, I got the best sheep, the best cow, the best goat, the oxen, and so on and so forth. He says, not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Why? Because what was the gift of God? Christ's sacrifice, that was the gift of God to Israel. You understand? Next verse. Go ahead. Not of works, lest any man mm -hmm. should boast. Not of the works of the law. The law of animal sacrifice, lest any man should boast. Now, let's go back. Go back to Romans 2.23. of Romans chapter 2 verse 23 go ahead thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law dishonorest thou God so who is the thou that we're boasting in the law give me the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 who was boasting who was the thou that was boasting in the law Matthew 3 verse 7 watch this the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 7 go ahead but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. You see that? Many of the what? But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. So now, this is when the Apostle John was baptizing, you understand, teaching the people the law when they were confessing their sins. It says, many of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So this is a sect. Of Israelites, the, scribe, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Okay, go ahead. They are the ones that, that that's the Tao that the Apostle Paul is talking about. The Jew that boasted in the law in Romans 2.17, Romans 2.23. That's the scribes and the Pharisees. Read that again, verse 7. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 7. Mm -hmm. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, mm -hmm. he said unto them, O oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? O oh, generation of vipers, who hath warned you for, to flee from the wrath to come? Go ahead, watch this, verse 8, read. Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. You see what he was telling them? He says, listen, you must bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. The word meat means good. Fruits good for repentance. Because what was they doing? They were boasting in the law of animal sacrifice, but they were not applying the commandments of the Most High God to go with that. Understand? Go ahead, watch this. And this is how far they, were, they went to boast. Next verse, read. And think not to say within yourselves, we have mm -hmm. Abraham to our father. You see that? Because this is how they were boasting. They said, listen, we are the seed of Abraham. They, we don't need to bring fruits meat for repentance. We are the seed of Abraham and that's enough. That's what they were saying. That's the same thing that you hear in the Christian churches today. UTDJs, Ukreflot Dollar. That's what they say. Our brothers and sisters that listen to those wicked pastors, they also say the same thing. They say, listen, because you are the seed of Abraham, you are saved. You don't have to do nothing. 
But the Apostle John corrected them. The, the sages and the fairies, the scribes, he said, listen, no. Read again verse 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 8. Read. For therefore fruits meet for repentance. He says, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, meaning keep the commandments of the law. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt handle hate your brother in your heart, so on and so forth. They were not keeping those commandments. Read. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Go ahead. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see what he was telling them? He said, listen, just because you come from Abraham, it does not mean automatically you're going to get delivered. You must bring forth, therefore, fruit, meat for repentance. That's what he was telling them. You understand? Watch this. Hold that. Get Romans 9. Hmm. Get Romans chapter 9. Okay. Romans 9, verse 6. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not as though the word of God have taken an effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. You see what he's saying? He says, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. What is he saying? Hold that. Get Zechariah 13, verse 8 real quick. Let's understand what the Apostle Paul is saying here. Zechariah chapter 13, read verse 8. The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, Two parts they in shall be cut off and die. Go ahead. But, but the third shall be left they in. So now what he's talking about here is talking about two thirds of Israel, they are not going to repent. That's what the Apostle Paul has explained. Two thirds of Israel, they are not going to repent. You understand? They will not repent. Go back. Romans 9. Read verse 7 now. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? You see that? He said, just because they come from Abraham does not make them the children of God. That's what he's saying, going into. But this goes into two-thirds of Israel that were prophesied not to repent. You understand? Just because they come from Abraham does not mean they're going to get the kingdom of heaven on earth when the Lord returns. Right? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In Isaac will the seed of God be called. The seed of God will come through Isaac. You understand? Jacob, then the 12 tribes of Israel. So what he's talking about is, go back to Matthew now. Matthew chapter 3. Read verse 9 again. Of Matthew chapter 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. So they were boasting that, listen, we are the seed of Abraham. So guess what? We are automatically eligible for salvation. That's what. That's how they thought. That's the same thing today. Because those wicked scribes and Sadducees back then, the Pharisees, they are back today. Understand that. Watch this. Give me the book of John chapter 8 verse 3. John 8, the third chapter. John chapter 8 and the third verse. Read that. The book of John Chapter 8, verse 3. Go ahead. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. Mm -hmm. And when they had set her in the midst. So now you've got the scribes and Pharisees that brought the woman that was caught, you understand, bumping and grinding. So what's happening here is the subject matters about the scribes and Pharisees are accusing this woman of committing adultery, but not dealing with the men also. Watch this. Jump down to verse 33. Of John chapter 8, verse 33. Mm -hmm. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Stop right there. You see what they are saying? He says, Listen, we Abraham's seed. We are never in bondage to any man. Why? John 11, verse 47. Watch this. He says, We are Abraham's seed. We are never in bondage to any man. They were in slavery, but the way they were living, it didn't seem like they were in captivity. They were not living like the rest of the Israelites. Watch this. John 11 verse 47. Watch this. Well, John chapter 11 verse 47. Mm -hmm. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we 
for this man doth many miracles. He doeth many miracles. So you've got the chief priests, the Pharisees, they gather the council, okay? But watch this, because Christ was pushing the truth. He was teaching. You understand? Read. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see what they were worried about? They were worried about Rome taking away their place in the kingdom. Because why? They were well taken care of by Rome. So now they are saying, listen, this is now, this is not the Roman Republic. This is the Roman Empire now. During this time. He says, if we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Why? Because they reported to Rome, just like Gutiri Jakes, Bukreflo, Dola, Pastor Chris, and all that. They have been taken care of by who? America. Just like they were taken care of by Rome back then. That's why I go back to John 8, read verse 33 again. That's why they said what they said here. The book of John chapter 8, verse 33. Mm -hmm. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Go ahead. And, and we're never in bondage to any man. You see that? How we're never them? in bondage. Hold on. We're never in bondage to any man. We're never in bondage to any man. Because they didn't feel like they were in captivity. Because Rome was taking care of them. Hold that. Give me Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 3. Watch this. For Psalms, chapter 73, verse 3. Come on. For I was envious of, at the foolish when mm -hmm. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. You see what King David is saying? He said, listen, I was envious at the foolish. Because guess what? The foolish were the scribes and Pharisees who were living better than the rest of the Israelites because Rome took care of them. They had high positions in Rome when he saw the prosperity of the wicked, because they were wicked as hell. Read verse 5 now, verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, is 5. Mm -hmm. They are not in trouble as other men. Come on. Neither are they plagued like, plagued like other men. You see that? They were not in trouble as the rest of the Israelites in Rome. Neither were they plagued like other men. They were not catching hell. Go ahead. Verse 6. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. You see that? Pride, hold on. It says, therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. That's why it says they were boasting in the law of animal sacrifice. Not only that, that we are Abraham's seed. There's no need for us to bring fruit, meat for repentance. Go ahead. Violence covered them as a garment. You see that thing? They were so violent that they released Barabbas, a thief and a lion, a robber, instead of Christ. Read. Their eyes stand out with fatness. Because they were well taken care of. Go ahead. They have more than heart could wish. They have more than heart could wish because they were being taken care of by Rome. Next verse. Watch this. They are corrupt hmm. and speak wickedly concerning oppression. Hmm. They speak loftily. That's what we just read in John 8.33. Is that they are corrupt. They and speak wickedly concerning oppression. That's why it says, we be Abraham's seed. We've never, we have never been in bondage to any man. While they were under captivity in Rome, guess what? They, were, they thought they were free. You understand? Go ahead. They set their mouth against the heavens, mm -hmm. and their tongue walketh through the earth. Meaning they what? They are wicked as hell. They speak evil of the. They spoke evil of what Christ was teaching. They spoke evil of the apostle that came after Christ when Christ went back to the Father. They spoke evil of the gospel of Christ. Read verse, verse eleven. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter seventy-three, verse eleven. And they say, How doth God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? You say that is there knowledge in the Most High? Because, listen, the Messiah walked the earth. And they, they, instead of listening to what he taught, they say he's making himself equal to God. And Christ never did that. They were just accusing him at every turn. Go ahead. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. I need you to put power in your reading. Read verse 12 again. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 12. Read. Behold. These are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. 
You see that these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. What was the world of Rome, the Roman Empire? They were prospering. They increased in riches. How? Because people had to bring what? They were forcing the people to still bring sacrifices. Why? Because they did not have the faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. Because that's how they ate. That's how they live large, like better than the rest of the Israelites. That's why it's saying, it says, why? Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Go back to John 8. Read verse 33 again. The book of John chapter 8, verse 33. Go ahead. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. You see that? They speak evil concerning oppression. They speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. That's what we are seeing here. Read. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Because why? How sayest thou, we shall be made free? Because in their minds, they were free already. They were not slaves. You see the point? Jump down. Jump down to verse... Um, read. Keep reading. Read verse 34. Go ahead. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Because they were committing sin. They were not keeping God's commandments. Although they were boasting in the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. You understand? Because they were living large. They were eating off of the people. Why? Because the people brought the sacrifices. Because that's how the Levites were taken care of under the old covenant. You understand? Jump down to verse 37. Read. Book of John chapter 8 verse 37. Read. I know that here Abraham's seed. You see what he's saying? Hold on. He says, I know that you are Abraham's seed. I know that already. That's what Christ is saying. Watch this. Read. But ye seek to kill me. Mm -hmm. Because my word hath no place in you. Because they did not have faith in what Christ taught and the sacrifice that he made. Okay, jump down to verse 39. Watch this. The book of John chapter 8 verse 39. Mm -hmm. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Mm. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. Read that again, verse 39. What did he say? Mm. Heavy the stuff. John, Go chapter ahead. 8, verse 39. Come on. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. You see that if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Why? Because our forefather Abraham, he brought forth fruits need for repentance. Get that in Genesis 26 verse 5. Okay. Genesis 26 verse 5. Of course, what was going on here, they were saying, they were boasting in Abraham that we be Abraham's seed. We're never in bondage to no man. We be Abraham's seed. There's no need for us to bring fruits need for repentance. You understand? So they were boasting in that, thinking that is enough, saying, no, we are the seed of Abraham. We will get the, the promise of internal inheritance. That's a lie. Because we must bring forth fruits, need for repentance. Genesis 26, verse 5. Let's see the works of Abraham. Read it. The book of Genesis, chapter 26, verse 5. Come on. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice mm -hmm. and kept my charge. Read it. My commandments, my statutes, and my laws. That's the works of Abraham. Abraham, our forefather, kept the commandments of the Most High God. He brought forth, he brought forth fruits, meat for repentance. Okay? Now watch this. Go back to Romans chapter 2. Okay? Because I know some of you are falling off the horse now. Romans 2 verse 23. One more again. Romans chapter 2 verse 23. Go ahead. Thou thou makest thy boast of the law. Mm -hmm. Through breaking the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. So the thou that the thou is talking about the scribes and Pharisees that they were boasting of the law. They were boasting. You understand? Watch this. Hold this. Give me Matthew 23 and 1. Matthew chapter 23 and 1. We're still going to deal with that boasting part. We're going to deal with the law in a second. Matthew 23 verse 1. Read that. The book of Matthew. Chapter 23, verse 1. Go ahead. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and, and to his disciples, saying, okay. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. 
So the scribes and Pharisees, they were sitting in, in the seat of Moses. Because remember, Moses was the lawgiver when we came out of the when we came out of Egypt, when we we're in the wilderness. So now they also they were doing the same. They were the lawgivers. You understand? The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They were in the place of authority. Watch this. Go ahead. Oh, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that is it, is it, hold on. Wait. It says, all oh, therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe. Is whatever they command you, do it. That observe and do. Okay? Read. Because they were teaching the law. Read. But do not be after their works. For they say and do not. He says, but do not ye, but, but don't do what they do. Because they say, meaning they teach, but they don't do what they teach. They were hypocrites. So now what we're reading here, they were boasting. But they were not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. You understand? Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not murder. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall, all of them, they were not doing none of that stuff. But although they were boasting that they were Abraham's seed, they were boasting in the law, which we're about to read about now. Go back to Romans 2.23. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 23. Go ahead. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. You see that? They were boasting. That's what we read. They say, but they did not. He said they were boasting of the law. Get that in Hebrews now, chapter 10. Hebrews 10, verse 1. This is the law they were boasting in. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Come on. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and, not the, and not the very image of the things. Not the very it, image of the things. The things goes into the animals, okay? Read that again, verse 10, verse 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Mm -hmm. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm. and not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the commas they unto perfect. So the law that has been referenced here is the law of animal sacrifice, which the, the scribes and Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, they were boasting in. They were boasting in the law of animal sacrifice. Why? Give me Hebrews 9, verse 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 11. Because now it says, the shadow of good things to come. Who was the shadow of things to come? Read that. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. Mm -hmm. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building. So because guess what? Here what he's talking about is Christ was become an high priest of good things to come. Why? Because... The Levi, the, the priesthood, the Levitical priesthood was temporary until the true priest should come, which is Christ. You understand? By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, meaning not of the temple that was standing. You understand? Go ahead. Now, the jump, up to verse nine. jump up to verse 9. Now, now we know the, the share of good things to come. That was Christ, the high priest that was to come. You understand? Jump up to verse 9 now because the law of animal sacrifice, this is what it included. You understand? This is what it entailed. Read verse 9. Jump up to verse 9. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Which was a figure for the time then present. So the law of animal sacrifice was the figure for the time then present. Go ahead. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Stop right there in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. So who was getting the gifts and the sacrifices? The scribes and Pharisees. Why? Because, guess what? Remember, it says, lest any man should boast. You understand? Lest any man should boast because it is the gift of God. So, but this is where they were boasting in this thing right here. That they, boast, they brought the best sheep, the best oxen and all of that stuff. And guess what? They were living large. This, that's why they spoke lawfully concerning oppression. Read again verse 9. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect 
as pertaining to the conscience. You see that that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience because why? The conscience was still defiled. The mind was still messed up. Okay, go ahead. Which stood only in meats and drinks. The meat offerings and drink offerings. Go ahead. And diverse washings. And carnal ordinances. So now the diverse washings and cardinal account, the diverse washings is talked about goes back to the Levites, the, the priests, where they had to wash themselves before they enter into the temple to perform the sacrifices. That's the diverse washings. Okay, go ahead. Imposed on them until the time of reformation. Until the time of Christ, until the time of the New Testament be ushered in. Go ahead. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Really? Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, mm -hmm. having obtained eternal redemption for us. You see that? So neither by the blood of goats and calves, which was what? both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies mm -hmm. to the purifying of the flesh. You see that? So it says, if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes and heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, Guess what? Watch this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without the spot, without spot to God? You see that? So Christ, his blood was more precious. You understand? His blood was more precious. It not only that, but it cleaned the conscience. That's why now Christ deal with our conscience now. Because why? The blood of bulls and goats did not clean our conscience. Our conscience was not clean before this Lord. Now, but the blood of the blood of Christ, guess what? Through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The dead works was what? The law of animal sacrifice that we read from verse 9 down to verse 12. That's the dead works. You men understand that? Yes, sir. The dead works is the law of animal sacrifice. That's what he's talking about. That's the dead works because it did not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. Okay? Now go back to Hebrews 10. Read verse 2 now again. No, read Hebrews 10 verse 1 again, then we're going to read down. We're still dealing with the law that the scribes and Pharisees was boasting in that we read in, in, in Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 as well. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Go ahead. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, mm -hmm. and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the commas they unto perfect. The commas could not be made perfect. Why? Because the conscience was not clear. They didn't have a clean conscience towards the Lord. You understand? Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Mm hmm because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. You see that? It says, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because they would have stopped if it was perfect. Because those worshippers that was purged once, they should not have any more conscience of sin, but they did because they, it wasn't perfect. Okay, go ahead. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. You see that? So the sacrifices were a reminder that we're in the midst of sin and our conscience was not clean. Right? For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. That's why Christ's sacrifice was necessary. Right? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice an offering thou wouldest not. Mm -hmm. But a body hast thou prepared me. But the body has, has been prepared, which is the body of Christ. Read. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. You see that the Lord says the burnt offerings, the sacrifices for sin, I don't have pleasure in that anymore. Why? 
because Israel wasn't changing. We were not changing. We're still doing the same evil over and over, and we were not changing. That was the problem. You understand? Give me a second. Okay, go ahead. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. You see that? He says, then said, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Why? What was the will? Keep going. Come on. Above when he said, sacrifice mm -hmm. an offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin that would is not. So he's repeating himself again. He said, listen, I don't have pleasure in that anymore. The Lord is saying, he says, thou wouldest not, meaning don't do that anymore ever. Go ahead. Neither had pleasure the end, mm -hmm. which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law. Which law? This law. Jump up to verse 6 so we know which law this is. You understand? The book of Hebrews chapter 10 is 6. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast no pleasure. Mm -hmm. You see that? In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, Thou has had no pleasure. That's the law when it says, which are offered by the law, I have no pleasure in that anymore. Okay, go ahead, verse 9. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 9. Read. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. You see that? He taketh away the first covenant, that he may establish the second covenant under Christ. Read. By the which... Will, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You see that? By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. But the body is of Christ. But the body, but a body has thou prepared me. He's repeating himself again. Go ahead. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins you see that he's telling them listen the reason why christ had to come to be at that ultimate sacrifice once for all because every priest meaning the levites they stood daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins that's why he's saying right there go ahead but this man mm -hmm. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. You see, there's some heavy stuff. Let's let you know the power that Christ did. The power that Christ had, listen, he only did one sacrifice. He didn't have to do multiple sacrifices, just one. Just one sacrifice, he sat down on the right hand of the most High God. Go back to Romans 2 now. We read verse 23 again. Romans 2.23, so we understand the boasting that he's talking about. The boasting in what? In, 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 in diverse, in, 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 in um, drink, meat offerings, you understand? Sacrifices of oxen, sheep, cow, goat, so on and so forth. They were boasting in that. Read that. Romans 2.23. The book of Romans, the 2 verse 23. Read. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, mm -hmm. through breaking the law, dishonoreth thou God. They were dishonoring the Mosai because they were making boast of the law, but they were breaking the commandments. Because remember, we had the law of animal sacrifice coupled with the commandments. You see that? So now we are under Christ. We have our faith. We, our faith, we put our faith in Christ plus keeping of the commandments. Get that in the Re Revelation 14 verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12. Read that. So we understand. You understand? So we still keep the commandments. We believe on Christ, but you believe on Christ plus keeping of the commandments. You cannot just believe on Christ, you don't keep the commandments. You don't keep the commandments and you don't believe on Christ, you will not get the kingdom. Read that. Revelation 14 verse 12. The book of Revelation, chapter 14 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience of the saints. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. You see that? Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Meaning the faith in the sacrifice that the Lord made. Okay? Now, go back to Romans. Okay? Romans 2. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 
Mm -hmm. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonor thou God. Jump down to verse 28. Watch this now. Now we're getting, it's getting hot. Read that, verse 28. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Stop right there. For he is not a what? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. So who is this making reference to? The scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests, the Sadducees. Because there were only Jews when, 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 what? There were only Jews on the outside. What does that mean? When he says, for he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Okay, let's deal with that. Hold that. Give me that in Matthew 23. Now go back to Matthew. Matthew 23, read verse 5. For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Okay, read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 5. Read. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. Stop right there. Read again. What? The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. You see that the scribes and Pharisees, what they did, the works they did, they did to be seen of men. It wasn't sincere. So guess what? They were Jew outwardly. They were doing it to be seen of men. They were not glorifying the most high. They were doing it to be seen of men. That's what you see. The way with, with T.D. Jakes, they moved the Creflo dollar. they doing the works of God, quote unquote, to be seen of men. It's got nothing to do with the, uh, gathering the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't care about that. They do it to be seen of men. Hold this. Give me the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 15. Okay? They do it to be seen of men. It's not sincere. The book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 15. Go ahead. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Mm -hmm. And some also of goodwill. Because the apostles, they taught Christ of goodwill. Because why? They were teaching that only the 12 tribes of Israel are eligible for salvation. But the scribes and Pharisees, they were teaching of envy and strife. That's why they were going to various churches, perverting the gospel of Christ. You understand? Read. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, they were doing it for what? Hold on. Is that the one preached Christ of contention? They were doing, they were teaching for contention, not sincerely. Guess what? They were doing it for to be seen of men. Not sincerely. Go ahead. Not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You see that? There was sub, they were, their job was to add affliction to our bonds. We were already under Roman persecution. We were already under Roman captivity, slavery. Guess what? They were adding to our oppression. That's why they were, because they were saying, we are not under bondage to any man. Read. But the other of love, mm -hmm. knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel, you see that? But the other of love, who's there? What was the love that the apostles was teaching? Give me that in 1 John 5 and 3. But the other, they were teaching it of love. What was the love that they were teaching? Read that. 1 John 5 and 3. First book of John, chapter 5 is 3. Go ahead. But this is the love of God, mm -hmm. that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. You see that? For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So that's the love that they were teaching. They were teaching the people to repent and keep God's laws. That's why it says, Father, for the other of love, knowing that I'm set for the defense of the gospel. The only way we can defend the gospel, brothers, we must teach love. Wait, what is that? Keeping of the commandments of God in the faith of the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. So go back to Matthew. Okay, 23, read verse 5 again. The book of Matthew. Chapter 23, verse 5. Read. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. You see that? They were not doing it sincerely. They were not doing it sincerely. They were doing it for them to be seen of men. Go ahead. They make broad their phylacteries mm. and enlarge the borders of their garments. You see what they were doing? They enlarge their phylacteries. Phylacteries is that box that they put on their head and they put the laws of God in there. Because they took it literally, not spiritually. Not only that, it says, and enlarge the borrows of their garments. They had big kung fu fringes, you understand? They had beautiful garments, okay? Guess what? 
but they did it to, for to be seen of men. Jump down to verse 28. Watch this. You know what? Read verse 26, then we're going to jump to 28. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, mm -hmm. that the outside of them may be clean also. So the Lord was saying, deal with what's on the inside, the inner man. Keep the commandments of the Most High God, and the outside will look also good. Read verse 28 now. Verse 28. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. You see that? They were appearing righteous unto men. Remember, because it says, the, the scribes and Pharisees, they sit in Moses' seat. Jump up to verse 3 again. Read verse 3 again. Verse the 2 and Matthew, 3 together. The, the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 2. Read. Saying, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Mm -hmm. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. Mm -hmm. That observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. You see that? So that's why it says, even so, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. Why? Because they were boasting in the law, teaching that to keep the commandments, but they were not doing it. They were, they were hypocrites. Jump down to verse 28. Read that, read that again. One more again. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 28. Mm -hmm. Even so. You know, you know what? Read 27 and 28 together. Because Christ is making it plain in the next two verses, 27 and 28, from verse 20, um, from 25. Read 27 and 28 together. The book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites, for ye are like unto white sepulchres. Whited sepulchres, whited sepulchres, meaning a sepulchre that look good, looks beautiful on the outside. Go ahead. They look the part, right? For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones mm -hmm. and of all uncleanness. They were full of sin. They were not keeping the laws of God. Go ahead. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, mm -hmm. but within ye are full of hypo hypocrisy and iniquity. That's what, that's what the problem with the, the, the problem with the scribes and Pharisees, guess what? They appeared righteous unto men on the outward, but within they were full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Now we understand what the Apostle Paul was explaining in Romans 2. Go back to Romans 2. Read verse 28 again. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. You see that? Because why? They were doing it for sure. So it says, you know, you, you're not a Jew based on how you look on the outside. You understand? Because they were not doing it sincerely. They were doing it to boast. So it says, he is not a, he, but he is a Jew, which is one, um, no? Verse 28. He is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. That's what Christ was explaining in Matthew 23. Go ahead. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Neither is the circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. This circumcision here, he took about the actual physical circumcision that you read about in, in let's get there, Leviticus 12. Leviticus 12, let's get that real quick. Leviticus 12, it says, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. Because what? What is he talking about is twofold. First, he talk about the actual physical circumcision, but he's also talking about the outward appearing righteous unto men, which is the outward circumcision. Watch this. Roman, uh, Leviticus 12, read verse 2. The book of Leviticus chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, then, shall, then she shall be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation for, in, for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. So she gave birth to a boy, really? And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. 
You see that the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So guess what? So he was saying, listen, you look good on the outside. The same way you physically have circumcised your foreskin, but guess what? You are not keeping the commandments. You see that? They were, but I'm, he's going to explain, but they were not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Jump up to verse 25 so we can explain, so we can understand. Go back to Romans 2, read verse 25. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For circumcision verily profited. So circumcision that we, hold on, circumcision that we read in Leviticus 12, it profits. Why? Because it's the law that was given to our forefather Abraham in Genesis, the 17th chapter. Okay? So circumcision very it profits because it's the law. Read. If thou keep the law. If you keep the commandments, because what's the point of view? Your penis is, is physically circumcised, but you're not keeping the commandments because the physical circumcision, guess what? When you guess when you keep the commandments at the, as as well as well, guess what? You physically circumcising your penis also you must also circumcise the mind. Your mind must be also be circumcised. The scribes and Pharisees was not doing that. You understand? So it says circumcision it profits if you keep the commandments. You understand? Go ahead. But if thou be a breaker of the law, mm -hmm. Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Meaning what? It's not profitable. It's not profitable. That's the point. Go, go to Leviticus 26, verse 41. Leviticus 26, verse 41. Because it says, that circumcision yet yeah, verily profits if you keep the commandments. Okay, Leviticus 26, read verse 1. Read verse 41. We read the actual physical circumcision in Leviticus 12. Watch this. Leviticus 26, verse 41. Now it goes into what? If you keep the law, it's profitable. But if you don't keep the law, what's the point of you circumcising, but you're not keeping the commandments of the Mosa? But is he saying don't circumcise? He's not saying that. But behind that, you must keep the law to go with it. Read it. The book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 41. And that I also have walked contrary unto them mm -hmm. and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. You see that? If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. The scribes and Pharisees, their uncircumcised heart was not humbled. Although they were, mm, read, just, read, just finish that. If their uncircumcised heart then be humbled. Go ahead. And they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. And we accept of the punishment of our sin. Go ahead. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob mm -hmm. and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land. And I will remember the land of Israel. So that's what the Lord is saying. So he says, yes, physically you are circumcised, but your mind also must be what? Must be circumcised. Get that in Jeremiah 4 verse 4. The book of Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4. Go ahead. Circumcise yourself to the Lord and mm -hmm. take away the four skins of your heart. You see what he's saying? He says, repent. Circumcise the, yourself to the Lord and take away the four skins of your heart, your mind. Because remember, even when you are not physically circumcised, guess what? You are unclean. So likewise, if the mind is not, if you're not keeping God's laws with your mind, your mind, your thought process is unclean, is messed up. You're not of a sound mind. Okay, go ahead. Ye men of Judah and inhabitants mm -hmm. of Jerusalem. You see that? Ye men of Judah. Remember, this is under what? The, the Jeremiah is prophesying about Babylon here. Okay, under Nebuchadnezzar. Go ahead. Lest my fury come forth like fire mm -hmm. and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Because of the evil of your doings. Because here... The Lord was getting ready to use ne the, the, uh, Nebuchadnezzar to come and take Judah, Benjamin, and Levi into captivity together with the Northern Kingdom because they were under the Assyrians because they took over the Assyrian Empire, the Babylonians, when they took over. Okay? Now, go back to Romans 2. Romans chapter 2, read verse 25 one more again. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law, 
But if there be a break of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You see that is that yeah, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. Why? Because they were what? They were boasting, they were boasting in the law, but they were not keeping the commandments, for they say and do not. That's what we read in Matthew 23. Okay, go ahead. Verse 26. Therefore, if the circumcision keep the righteousness of the law. Stop right there. Now, nah. hmm. the apostle Paul is saying something here heavy. I'm going to deal with that in a second. So 26 and 27, I'm going to deal with those together. Jump back down to verse 28. Because 28 deals with verse 25, then 29 and 29. And 26 and 27, they, work, they go hand in hand. I'm going to explain it in a second. Read 28 again now. The book of Romans, the 2 verse 28. Come on. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Mm -hmm. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. You see that? Why? Because if you, you, if you don't keep the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. That's what the Apostle Paul was explaining here. Why? He's talking about the Jews in Jerusalem, the scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests that was boasting in the law, but they would keep breaking the commandments of the Mosai. Go ahead. But he is a Jew, which is one mm -hmm. inwardly. Stop right there. But he says, you are a Jew, which is one inwardly. What is he talking about? He says, you are a Jew, which is one inwardly. Okay, hold this. Give me the book of Ephesians 3. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Ephesians 3, read verse 16. The book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. You see that is that he, the Lord, will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Who's the inner man? Christ. Christ is the inner man. Jump up. Yeah, keep going. He's going to tell you who the inner man is. That he says he, he is a, for he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Because inwardly, who's the inner man? He's going to let you know. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. You see that? That Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith. The scribes and Pharisees, Christ did not dwell in their hearts by faith because they didn't have Christ. They didn't have faith in Christ. They did not have faith in the sacrifice that Christ made. They didn't have faith in that. That's why they were Jews outwardly. They did it to be seen of men. They will wear these big kung fu fringes, but they were not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. So they were not Jews inwardly. They were not, they were not changing. They were not applying the laws of God to change, to repent from being lost. They were not doing that. Read that again, verse 17. Read 16 and 17 together for me. Come on. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Mm -hmm. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. You see that? So Christ is that inward man. The spirit of Christ was not in them because they did not have faith in the Messiah. That was the issue. You understand? So now they had to fake it. Just look good on the outside, but don't keep the commandments because their faith was not in the Messiah. Their faith was in what? Their faith was in the animals that they sacrificed, that they had, they had faith in that. That's why, hold this, give me Colossians 2. This is why they were doing this, okay? This is why they were compelling the people to do this right here. Colossians 2, read verse 16. Watch this. Because this is what they were still pushing the people to do. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in mm -hmm. drink, or in respect of any holy day. No, 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 you. no. You don't say that. Read that again, verse 16. Excuse me, sir. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of an holy day. Go ahead. Or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. So now what's happening here is the Apostle Paul is telling, is telling the church of Colossus. He said, listen, 
Let no man judge you, that therefore judge you in me. Who was the man that was judging the, the church that was in Colossae in the meat offerings? The scribes and Pharisees, they were doing that. They were still pushing the law of animal sacrifice unto the people, even though Christ died and left. So it says, let no man judge you in the meat offerings, in the drink offerings, or in respect of an holy day. Remember, how did we respect these holy days, these high days? We respected them by sacrificing. So how did we respect the holy, the high days? By the meat and drink offerings. How did we respect the new moon? By the meat and drink offerings. How did we respect the Sabbath days? By the meat and drink offerings, the sacrifices that we performed. You understand? So that was their, their faith was in that, was not in Christ. Next verse. Which are a shadow of things to come. That's what we read in Hebrews 10, which are a shadow of things to come. Hebrews 9 verse 11, Hebrews 10 verse 1 a shadow of things to come. So these, these meat and drink offerings, the sin offerings were a shadow of things to come. Go ahead. But the body is of Christ. But the body is of Christ. He's letting you know right there, let's listen, put your faith in the Messiah now. Not, no longer in the what? The blood of bulls and of calves and of goats. Don't do that no more. You understand? But guess what? They didn't have faith in the Messiah. That was their issue. That's why they were blind. They couldn't see what was going on. They didn't see Christ in the scriptures. Just like the pastors today, they don't see Christ in the scriptures. Although they can say the name of Christ over and over, they still don't see him in the scriptures. They don't see him. They are blind. You understand? They are blind. Okay? Now, um, let's go back. Go back to Romans. Book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 29. No, no, no. Hold on. Go back to Ephesians. I'm sorry. Go back to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 again. Watch this. The book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verse 17. Mm -hmm. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love. They were not rooted and grounded in the commandments. That's why they did not have faith in the Messiah. You understand? That's why they were still compelling the people to what to bring the offerings unto them. Jump down to verse 19. The book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19. And to know the love of Christ mm -hmm. passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see that, that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. They might, they might be filled with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding now that we are under the new covenant. They didn't have that. They were blind. That's why they were confused. That's why they didn't see Christ. That's why they keep pushing the animal sacrifice. You understand? Even after Christ died. You understand? They, because the reason why they could still push it because the temple was still standing. It wasn't until when the temple was destroyed that now there was no more sacrifice and that was done after 70 AD. Okay? Now, go back to Romans. Okay, Romans 2. Romans chapter 2, um, read verse 29, one more again. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 29. Go ahead. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. You see that? You are a Jew, which is one inwardly. Why? Because the, spirit, the inner man, which is in you, which is Christ, you have faith in Christ. So you are a Jew, because why? You keep the commandments, and you have the faith in the Messiah. Go ahead. And circumcision is that of the heart. You see that? And the circumcision is that of the mind. Because why? Although they physically circumcised, but they didn't circumcise their mind as well. Like we read in verse 25. Jump up to verse 25 again. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For circumcision verily profiteth, mm. if thou keep the law. You see that? If you keep the commandments, it profits. Read. But... If thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. So it's no profit. Jump down to verse 29 again. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 29. Mm -hmm. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. Mm -hmm. And circumcision is that of the heart. That's what we read in Jeremiah 4 and 4. That's what we read in Leviticus 26 verse 41. Go ahead. 
in the spirit. You see that in the spirit, the spirit of Christ that's in you, that's how you're going to be circumcised in your mind because the inward man, which is Christ in you, guess what? That's how you're going to but You're going to be a Jew, which is one inwardly. He's not saying you are a Jew inwardly based, meaning how you feel in your heart. No, he's not talking about that. He's talking about that the, 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 the Jews that believed on Christ, they kept the commandments, what? Not just looking good on the outside, but they were also as pertaining to the conscience. They were also what? They had a clean conscience towards the most High God. That's the point. Read. But they were still Israel by blood. Go ahead. And not in the letter. Not in the letter, which is jump up to verse 28. Read verse 28 again. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. That's the letter. Go jump down to verse 29 and not in the what? Come on, verse 29. And not in the letter. Read that part. And not in the letter. And not in the letter, which is what we read in verse 28. Go ahead. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. Because those that are Jews inwardly, meaning they are sincerely keeping the commandments, Christ is the, is the spirit, the spirit of Christ is on them. They have the faith in the Messiah and they are keeping the commandments. Guess what? Their praise is not of men, but of God. But the scribes and Pharisees, their praise was of men and not of God because they're doing it to be seen of men. Make sense? Yes, sir. Jump up to verse 26 now. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 26. Remember, we're dealing with the circumcision of Israel, which is Southern Kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Understand, don't lose the point now. Verse 26, watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Go ahead. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge mm. thee, who by the letter and circumcision does tra transgress the law. Stop right there. Now, there's some heavy stuff. Now, hold this. Give me the book of Ephesians, okay? Give me Ephesians 2. So we understand what the Apostle Paul is really saying here. Okay, Ephesians 2. Get Ephesians 2 verse 11. Watch this. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. Remember, these are Israelites scattered in Ephesus, okay? Which is part of Asia Minor. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. So the Gentiles here is talking about who? Northern Kingdom. The Gentiles here is Northern Kingdom, okay? Read. Who are called uncircumcision. Mm-hmm by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So who was the circumcision? Southern kingdom that we read now in Romans 2, verse 28 and 29, Romans 2, verse 25. That's the circumcision which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Jews, as they are referred to in the New Testament. You understand? So read that again, because I know some of you forgot already, but watch this. Read verse 11 again. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 11. Read. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, mm -hmm. who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So who are these Gentiles that were in time past were Gentiles in the flesh? Give me the book of Matthew 4. Get Matthew 4, verse 15. We read it earlier. Okay. Now we're taking back to it. Watch this. Matthew 4, verse 15. Come on, watch how this comes together. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 15. Come on. The land of Zebulon and the mm. land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You see that Galilee of the Gentiles, this is the northern kingdom of Israel, the remnant of northern kingdom that remained and all those whose spirit God has raised, that we read in Ezra chapter 3, verse 5. Now give me that in Romans 2, verse 9. The 
book of Romans chapter 2 verse 9. Come on. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. You see that of the Jew first, which is the circumcision, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and also of the Gentiles, northern kingdom. Who the apostle Paul was given commission to go and wake up. These Gentiles is what Galilee of the Gentiles in Matthew 4.15. Next verse. Go ahead. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. You see that to the Jew first, according to Zechariah 12, verse 7, and also to the Gentiles. That's why the Apostle Paul went to the Jew first, and then when they rejected, meaning the, the scribes and the Pharisees, the chief priests, when they rejected the, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas and the other apostles, they went to the Gentiles, which is who? Northern Kingdom. Get that in Galatians 2 now. Galatians chapter 2, okay? Galatians 2, let's read verse, let me see what verse I want. Galatians 2 and verse 7. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 7. Come on. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me. You see that? The gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to the apostle Paul. Who's the uncircumcision? Northern kingdom, who's also called the Gentiles. Go ahead. As the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So the apostle Peter was given the gospel of the circumcision, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Go ahead. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, mm -hmm. the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. So the Apostle Paul is letting you know who the uncircumcision is in verse 7. He's telling you them in verse 8. Who are they? The Gentiles. Northern Kingdom. Galilee of the Gentiles. That's what he's talking about right there. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Oh, praises. Now, watch this. Give me. He says the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel, the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed to the Apostle Paul. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 11. Hmm. Romans chapter 11. Okay. Watch this. Romans chapter 11 and verse 11. The book of Romans chapter 11 verse 11. Mm -hmm. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Have the southern kingdom stumbled that they should fall? Who stumbled? The scribes and Pharisees, the chief priests, go ahead. They, they stumbled that they fell. Meaning what? Because they rejected Christ and also they rejected the apostles that came to teach following the what? The prophecy in Zechariah 12 verse 7. Go ahead. God forbid. Meaning no. Go ahead. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles. Salvation is come unto the Gentiles, the uncircumcision, northern kingdom, right? For to provoke them to jealousy. To provoke Judah, Benjamin, and Levi to jealousy. Go ahead. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, mm -hmm. and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles. The diminishing of them, the, the riches of the Gentiles, meaning northern kingdom. Go ahead. How much more their fullness. How much more their fullness. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 13. Come on. For I speak to you, Gentiles, mm -hmm. inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. He says, I'm the apostle of the Gentiles now. The hell is this? That's what he's telling them. For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I'm the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Where did we read that? We read that alien Galatians 2 verse 7 and 8. That's what we read. Understand that. Okay, go back to Ephesians now too. Ephesians 2, read verse 11 one more again. Of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, mm -hmm. who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So now the circumcision of Israel, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, they were calling the uncircum the northern kingdom the uncircumcision, and they were calling them Gentiles. 
which is the, 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 the northern kingdom, which is who the apostle Paul was sent to teach. You understand? So that's what we're reading here. The apostle Paul was given the gospel of the uncircumcision. That's northern kingdom. Go back to Romans now. Go back to Romans chapter 2. Romans 2. Now read verse, Romans chapter 2, read verse 26 again. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if the, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law. Stop right stop. there. If the, hold on. If the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law. Who's the uncircumcision? Northern kingdom, which is also called Gentiles. But it says, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, what does that mean? Meaning they accept the Messiah. They keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. Hold this. Romans 3, okay? Romans chapter 3 and verse 21. Watch this. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 21. Come on. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest. Stop right there. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. The righteousness of the law, who's there? That's talk about Christ. He's the righteousness of the law without the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. Okay? Witnessed by the law and the prophets. So the righteousness of the law without the law, meaning keep the commandments of God under Christ and now no longer under the old covenant of animal sacrifice. You understand? He says it is witnessed by the law and the prophets because it's written in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning Christ. Next verse. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. You see and that? Hold on. He's explaining it some more because there's a semicolon there. It says, even the indeed the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. So he's letting you know now your righteousness towards God is by faith in Christ, no longer in the faith in the animal that we used to sacrifice. No more. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Mm -hmm. For there is no difference. There is no difference between what? Northern kingdom and southern kingdom because both of them must keep the commandments under Christ. That's what he's saying. Go back to Romans 2 now. Read verse 26 again. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 26. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law. You see that? So if the uncircumcision, hold on, the uncircumcision must keep the righteousness. If they keep the righteousness of the law, meaning they keep the commandments of God in the faith of Christ. Go ahead. Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? You see what he's asking? Shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Yes, it will be counted for circumcision. Why? Because they are keeping the commandments now under the, in, the, in the faith of Christ. That's what they're doing. That's Northern Kingdom. Go ahead. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature. And shall not, shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature. Because why? Remember what happened to Northern Kingdom. What did Northern Kingdom, what, what did they do? Northern kingdom went into idolatry. You understand? Shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, because they went into idolatry, they were cast off. You understand? Go ahead. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law. If it fulfill the law, meaning if they keep the commandments under Christ. Go ahead. Judge thee. He says, you must judge if the northern kingdom come back to the law. And hold this. Give me, give me John 10. Hmm. Let's get that in John 10 real quick. Okay. John chapter 10. Read verse 16. Let's understand what the apostle Paul is explaining here. Well, I'm going to explain it with this. John 10, 16. Read that. Well, John chapter 10, verse 16. Go ahead. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. That's the uncircumcision. The, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Which fold? This fold, meaning his fold. Talk about Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because why? They were cast off. Okay? Read. Them also I must bring. Them also I must bring back into the fold because they are not of this fold yet. 
because they were cast off because they went into idolatry. Read. And they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. You see that? It says, they shall hear my voice. How? Because the apostle Christ will go and teach them, and the apostle Paul will come behind Christ and teach northern kingdom. You understand? It says, and they shall be one fold, meaning one, 12 tribes of Israel, and one shepherd. That's what he's talking about here. Because why? Remember, hmm. give me the book. Um, let's see what Christ did here. Let's see what Christ did. First, get John 4. John 4 verse 9. Read that. John chapter 4 verse 9. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? Mm -hmm. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Guess what? We read this earlier in the beginning of the lesson. When I went over 1 Kings 12, 2 Chronicles 11, Zechariah 11 verse 14, 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 16 to 17, I went over this history. Now read it again, verse 9. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 9. Read. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest, askest think of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with, Samar or with the Samaritans. Okay, okay. I need you to stay, stay focused. He says, Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, meaning... Because he's talking, she's talking to Christ. She's from, she's from Northern Kingdom, Samaria. And Christ is from Southern Kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You understand? As the word called, ask a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Why? Because there was a split in the nation of Israel. And this woman, our sister here, she knew the history of Israel. You understand? Get that in Isaiah 7 real quick. Isaiah chapter 7. Let's get there. Isaiah chapter 7. Read verse 8. The book of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 8. Read. For the head of Syria is Damascus. Mm -hmm. And the head of Damascus in, is Rezin. Rezin. Go ahead. And within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken. That it be not a people. You see that after 65 years, Ephraim is going to be broken, that it be not a people, meaning what? They are going to be called not God's people. Go ahead. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria. So the capital city of Ephraim is Samaria. Go ahead. And the head of Samaria is Ramaliah's son. Go ahead, Pekka. If you will not believe, surely, he shall not be established. So now this Samaritan woman, she was an Ephraimite. She was an Israelite from the tribe of Ephraim, the sons of the, the sons and daughters of Joseph. So go back to John 4 now. Read verse 9 again. So she was what? She was Ephraim. Okay, Joseph was the father. Go ahead, read that. The book of John, chapter 4, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, Ask us drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Because the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So guess what? When he says the other sheep I have, this is an example of it right here. But let's get some more. Go back to John 4. Watch this. No, no, Matthew 4. Because what we read in John 10, 16, watch this. John 4, read verse 12. I mean, Matthew 4, verse 12. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 12. Come on. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. He went into Galilee. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Read. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, Capernaum which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali. 
in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, because the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, remember, this was a lot, a lot of land that was allotted by Joshua. So when it says, and of all them, the spirit, whose spirit God has raised, that we read in Ezra 3, verse, Ezra 1, verse 5, that's what this is going into. Go ahead. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias, the prophet, saying. So now, Matthew is quoting Isaiah, which he says, the, what was written in Isaiah must be fulfilled on this day. Go ahead. The land of Zebulon mm -hmm. and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You see that? By the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the uncircumcision. Okay, watch this. Read. The people which sat in darkness now saw great light. You see, no, no, no. Read that right. Come on. Excuse me, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 16. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. You see that? There's the people which sat in darkness. Who was the people? Remember, he's letting you know. He went to the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. So the people that was in the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, this is northern kingdom. They saw great light because they were in sin. They were in darkness. Go ahead. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. You see that? And to the people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Who is this talking about? Christ. Christ was that light, you understand, that they saw. Christ was that great light that they saw. Understand that. Hold that. Give me Luke 1. Luke chapter 1. Christ is the great light that they saw. Luke chapter 1, read verse 77. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 77. Mm -hmm. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Because Christ would do that. Christ would give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Go ahead. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us. So the day spring on high that visited them, who was that? Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Go ahead. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. To guide our feet into the way of peace. You see that? To give light unto them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of, in the shadow of death meaning captivity, to guide our feet in the, into the way of peace. Who did that? Christ did that. That's what we read in John 10, 16. He dealt with the Samaritan woman. He also went to Northern Kingdom to teach them the gospel. Go ahead. And the child grew and walked strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. So now what I'm showing you is we're reading what Matthew is, is explaining to us what Christ would do, will go to Northern Kingdom and teach them. Luke is explaining the same thing. Where are they getting this from? Get that in Isaiah 49. Watch this. Isaiah 49. Hmm. Isaiah chapter 49. Read verse 6. The book of Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. Come on. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. You see that? To raise up the tribes of Jacob. Come on. And to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. You see that? I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Go ahead. That thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. You see that? It says, I'm going to give you for a light to the Gentiles because that's what Christ did. Christ, he became that great light unto the Gentiles. You understand? Because they were set in darkness and in the shadow of death. Because, but Christ went over there to teach them. Go back to John 10 now. Read verse 16 again. Well, John chapter 10 verse 16. Mm -hmm. the, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And they shall be one fold and one shepherd. You see that? So what Christ is explaining here is talking about what? The other sheep that he had, northern kingdom. 
He went, and the Apostle Paul also went to teach them. You understand? The scattered Israelites. You understand? Northern Kingdom that was found in all these other places, you understand, under the Greeks, in Ephesus and all that. Yeah. And also the Jews of the Southern Kingdom, but the majority was, guess what, was in Jerusalem. Now, but watch this. Go back to Romans chapter 2. Read verse 27 again. Book of Romans chapter 2, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And shall not answer uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfills the law. Judge. You see that? Yeah. Hold on. If it fulfills, it says, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfilled the law. So if the uncircumcision of Israel fulfilled the law, and by nature, because they were cast off, they, they, were, they went into idolatry. That's why Christ said they must be brought back in. The Samaritan woman is one. Naphtali, Zebulon is one. You understand? Go ahead. Judge thee. He says, judge thee. You make the, you make the judgment. Jews, meaning Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, you look good on the outside, but you're not keeping the commandments. You are the circumcision of Israel, but you're not keeping the commandments. It says what? Their uncircumcision, if they keep the commandments, will not their uncircumcision be made circumcision? Because why? They're keeping the law in the faith of Christ. That's the point. Go ahead. Who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law? Because guess what? The, the circumcision were transgressing the law. They were boasting, but they were transgressing the law. Their uncircumcision, they did not know about Christ. So that's why they had to be brought back into the fold and learn about Christ. You see that? But guess what? Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Okay, give me Acts. Give me Acts chapter 15. Give me Acts chapter 15 verse 19. Watch this. Acts chapter 15 verse 19. Read. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. You see that is a don't trouble them which are from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Because remember what we read in John 10. Remember what we read in Luke, uh, Luke 1 verse 77 down. Matthew 4 verse 12 down to verse 16 somewhere there. Go ahead. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Because these were the issues that they were dealing with when they were brought back into the fold. When they were being brought back into the fold, guess what? They were taught to stay, to abstain from the pollutions of idols because why? They joined themselves unto idols. Okay, go ahead. And from fornication. And from fornication, sexual sins, go ahead. And from things strangled and from mm -hmm. blood. You see that from things that were strangled, they were eating strangled food and all that, and from blood. They were eating blood of the end. They were they eating blood. You know, look, watch that movie. What is it? Apocalypto, is it? Yeah, you see our northern kingdom. They were really out there. Okay? So now he's saying, listen, don't trouble them. With, let, let's not trouble them, but let's focus, let's teach them to focus on these things. Pollutions of idols, fornication, Strangled, things strangled, and from blood. They must focus on that. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him. You see that? It says Moses in old time had in every city them that preach him. Because they had school, there were schools all over. So it says the rest of the law, they're going to go to what? They're going to go to the schools to learn more, more laws than they already have. Because it says... When we go and reach out to them, these are the things that you focus on. Focus on what? They must abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. But when they come to the schools, guess what? They're going to learn more laws that they must repent, they must keep and repent from the more sins that they are in. You see the point? Okay, go ahead. Being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. You see that? Being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So likewise, when we go and teach, let's say we go to places like Sharpville, so way to what, what um, Macedon, Pretoria and all that, there's, there's a spirit that is operating out there. Pretoria's got a lot of whoredom. There's a lot of Christian churches that are just be doing demonic things. 
There's Ishmael over there doing evil. So guess what? When we arrive over there, those are the things we deal with, teach, because that's what they're dealing with. So, but the rest of the laws, when they come into the school, they come to learn, they learn other laws that they must keep. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, oh, please. Go back to Romans now. Romans 2. Read verse 27 again. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 27. Go ahead. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, mm. judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. You see that? So it says you judge, because the circumcision here they are, they are Jews outwardly because they want to be seen of men, but they're not keeping the laws. Here you've got Northern Kingdom who has been brought back into the fold. They're keeping the commandments in the faith of Christ. Because the scribes and Pharisees, they rejected Christ because they did not have faith in the Messiah. That was the issue. Go ahead. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Right. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, mm -hmm. in the spirit, and not in the letter. Whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now watch this. You see what we just read here? And when they, now you brothers, you'll understand what this means now. Now you understand what it means. We give, now I've given you the sense in the spirit of Christ to understand what this means. This is not talking about the, it's not talking about that you, the, the, you are not in, in Israelite by blood. No, it's talking about that you had Jews in Jerusalem that were boasting of the law of animal sacrifice. They did not have faith in the Messiah and they were part of the circumcision. And who is he talking about specifically? The scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests. You understand? The uncircumcision goes into northern kingdom who have been brought back into the fold to be all, to be what? Under what? Under the one fold and one shepherd, which is Christ. That's what this is going into. He's not talking about when he says he's one Jew inwardly, meaning how you feel in your heart. No. You are a Jew based on what? Your bloodline. Get that in Romans. Chapter 9, verse 3. Okay, read it. Book of Romans chapter 9, verse 3. Come on. For oh, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren. Mm -hmm. My kinsmen, according to the flesh. You see that? It says, For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Let's see if, what you are. As an Israelite, guess the Apostle Paul here is saying, I wish I did the same thing that Christ did for my brethren. My kingsmen are according to the flesh, according to bloodline. Let's see who is Paul's brethren, his kingsmen, according to blood. Read. Who are Israelites? You see that? Who are Israelites? So there's no Israelite, how I feel in my heart. No, you are an Israelite according to bloodline. Not how you feel in your heart, not spiritual Israel, but by bloodline, according to the flesh. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. To whom pertaineth the adoption and mm -hmm. the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. You see that? It says to whom pertaineth the adoption when we what? From the old covenant to the new covenant and the glory. The glory of the kingdom belongs to Israel and the covenants. The old covenant, new covenant was given to us and the giving of the law. Guess what? The laws of God was given to us. And the service of God. We are the servants of God doing God's service. And the promises. All the promises was given to us. Read. Whose are the fathers? Mm -hmm. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? And whoa, 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 whoa. As, as whom concerning the what? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came? concerning the spirit, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, no, the spirit. Christ came. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, as flesh, their flesh, their, not the spirit, their flesh, and as whom, as concerning the flesh. Which flesh, who are Israelites in verse 4, Christ came. Christ only came for the Israelites 
according to the flesh, not according to what spirit. No. Read. Who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. You see that? Amen to that thing. Amen to that thing. So Christ did not come for everybody. He only came for the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? Uh, concerning the flesh. Which flesh? Paul's brethren who are Israelites. You understand? So guess what? All Israel now, give me Romans 11. Romans chapter 11, read verse 20, read verse 25. Watch this. Of Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Mm -hmm. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. It, they said, the Apostle Paul says, don't be ignorant of this mystery. What mystery? Hold this. Give me Colossians. He says, you should be ignorant of this mystery. Hmm. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1. Read verse 25. Watch this. The book of Colossians chapter 1 is 25. Mm -hmm. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, mm -hmm. to fulfill the word of God. So the Apostle Paul is letting us know, listen, is according to the dispensation of God, which is given to him for us to fulfill the word of God. Watch this. What way did he fulfill? Read. Even the mystery. Even the what? Even the mystery. Even the mystery. The mystery. The mystery. What is the mystery? Go ahead. Which hath been hid from ages mm -hmm. and from generations. Read. But now is made manifest to his saints. So the mystery that has been hid from, from ages, from generation to generations, is now is made manifest to his saints. The 12 tribes that keep the commandments. Next verse. Watch this. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Yeah, among the what? Among the Gentiles. The mystery that the Apostle Paul is talking about is what? Is northern kingdom being brought back into the fold. That's the mystery that has been hid for ages. Because many people didn't know that. That's why many of our people today, they don't know that the Gentiles in the New Testament is making them, not all, but the Gentiles, when they say Jews and Gentiles, Jews and Gentiles, is making reference to northern kingdom that must be brought back into the fold. Why? Because there was a split in the nation of Israel during, under Rehoboam and Jeroboam after Solomon died. Northern kingdom, southern kingdom, there was a split. There was a family feud that we had. That's the mystery. Now in the New Testament, the apostle Paul is given the commission to go and bring northern kingdom back into the fold, following after Christ's footsteps. Read that again, verse 27. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 27. Read. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Among northern kingdom, read. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You see, the hope of the glory of the kingdom for northern kingdom that must be brought back into the fold by the blood of Christ. That's what he's talking about right there. Go back to Romans 11, verse 25. One more again. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 25. Go ahead. So I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. You see that? We just read the mystery. He says, don't be ignorant of this mystery. Go ahead. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. Don't be deceived. Don't be wise in your own, your own mind. Go ahead. That blindness in part is happened in is happened to Israel. The blindness, the blindness that happened in part to Israel. What is the blindness? The blindness is talk about what? They rejected the Messiah. They rejected the Messiah, and not only that, but they also rejected the apostles that taught they had to go to Judah first, according to the prophecy in Zechariah 12. You understand? So they were blind. They were blind to that mystery. They didn't understand that northern kingdom must be brought back into the fold. That's why it says blindness in part is happened to Israel. Go ahead, meaning Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. That's Israel is making reference to here. Go ahead. Until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. You see, that until the fullness of the Gentiles become in, until northern kingdom is brought back into the fold. 
Watch this. So Israel and the Gentiles here, which is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the Gentiles, which is the uncircumcision of Israel, northern kingdom. Watch what he says in verse 26 when he summarizes it up. Go ahead. And so all Israel shall be okay, saved. Okay. And so all what? And so all Israel shall be saved. All Israel, all Israel is Judah and Israel, Judah and Israel, for Jews and Gentiles, all Israel shall be saved. Go ahead. As it is written, mm -hmm. they shall come out of Zion, the deliverer, mm -hmm. and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see that the deliverer is Christ, who's going to turn away ungodliness from Jacob, not ungodliness from the whole world or everybody on the planet. No, he's going to turn ungodliness from Jacob, not the whole world. Go ahead. For this is my covenant unto them, mm -hmm. when I shall take away their sins. You see that this is my covenant unto them, because who the covenant was made with who? Get that in Hebrews 8. Verse 8, this is my covenant unto them. The covenant was only made with the Israelites. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You see that? I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So in Romans 2, the Apostle Paul is explaining Judah and Israel. That's what he's explaining. He's just calling them circumcision and uncircumcision. He's making reference to all 12 tribes, Judah and Israel, Jews and Gentiles, as they are called in the New Testament. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right here. I'm going to end the class right here. All praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. Oh, brothers and sisters, you got the sense this day. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's Amen. give the Lord a hand for that.